Good morning to all of you. I am Sandhya Pati, Faculty of Computer Technology Department from Priyadarshini College of Engineering, Nagpur. Today, I am giving you introduction about data warehousing and mining subject. Why should we learn this subject? What are the objectives of this subject? What are the applications of this subject in real world? Content with syllabus of the subject, COs with the subject, and other information about this subject. So the first one is the name of your subject that is data warehousing and mining. The subject code is BECT 406T. All of you must know about the data warehousing. You should have the information about the database management system in which the data is stored in the form of tables and rows. But day by day, the needs of the user grows. Based on their requirement, the data grows on increasing millions of millions of data. So in order to handle the such type of billions of data, the data warehouse is needed. So the basic need of data warehouse is to store the large information in one time storage for the future reference. So coming with next slide. So why should we learn this subject? Why should we learn this subject? As, as all of you might know about the database management system, where the records are stored in the limited space of manner. But in data warehouse, we can store all type of data, heterogeneous data, homogeneous data, structured and unstructured data. With the help of these utilities, the data warehouse can be helped to eliminate the following issues like data quality issues, unstable data in reports, data inconsistency, low query performance. So the data warehouse gives the ability to quickly run analysis on huge volumes of data. Next is what is the objective of this subject? The primary purpose of data warehouse is to provide a central repository of the information that can be quickly analyzed and queried to generate the relevant insights. For example, if a company having four branches in four different cities like Nagpur, Mumbai, Pune, and the central office of the company is located in Delhi, and the central office wants to retrieve the information from all the branches of the company, so the each and every time central office might have to make contact with all the branches to extract the information of the employees. But with the help of data warehouse, which provides the facility of central repository of the information, it stores the data in data warehouse and the information can be executed at a time from all the branches of the company. The next one is the specific types of the insight generated from a data warehouse can vary. Explore reasons for information gap between information needs and availability. Improves in database technologies, especially relational DBMS. Advances in computer hardware, including mass storage and partial architecture. Next is the utility of the, this subject. The data warehouse provides many benefits to business also. Some of the most common benefits include provide a stable central repository for the large amount of historical data improves business processes and decision making with actionable insights, increase a business's overall return on investment, improve data quality. Coming to the application of the subject in real world, the first application is the e-commerce application. In e-commerce platforms need to gather the key marketing metrics such as clicks, impressions, website visitors, etc from marketing tools and use that to approach their customers in a better way. Data, uh, data warehousing, mostly common used in e-commerce section. In recent times, the Amazon Redshift is the most popular warehouse being used for marketing analytics because of its user-friendly UI and flexibility. The next application of data warehouse is in retail industry. In retail industry, the data warehouse can be used by the retailer to easily identify the products with the high demand and the fastest selling demand. For example, in particular duration like Diwali and New Year, the sales of the electronic products may increase. So the manufacturer might know about this duration and they helps to increase the growth of the sales by increasing the manufacturing of the electronic products within this particular duration. So the data warehouse is very most full, useful in retail industry. It helps, it helps the data can be used to react to a rinse or fall in consumer demand quickly, which can ultimately be used to gain a competitive advantages. 
they are the mediators between wholesalers and end customers and that's why it is necessary for them to maintain the records of the both the parties for helping them to store data in an organized manner and the application of data warehouse comes into the fray. The next application of data warehouse is in airline industry. In the airline system, it is used for operation purpose like crew assignment, analysis of route profitability, frequent flyer program, promotions, etc. Next is the banking application. In banking also, the data warehouse mostly useful. It is widely used in banking to manage the resources available on desk effectively. Few banks also used for the market research, performance analysis of the product and operation. The most important operation in banking is fraud detection and security purpose. The next application is healthcare. In healthcare sector also used data warehouse to strategize and predict the outcomes, generate patient statement reports, share data with tie-in insurance companies, medical aid services, etc. Now, coming toward the syllabus of the data warehouse, with unit one, we have introduction, evaluation of data warehousing, consisting of characteristics, operational database system, and data warehouse. The characteristics of data warehouse are storage, fast accessibility, denormalization, and fast accession. The operational database includes OLTP and OLDP, where the OLTP stands for online transactional processing and OLDP stands for online analytical processing. Then we have multidimensional data models, data warehouse architecture, which consists of three tier architecture of data warehouse, different OLAP operations, design and construction of data warehouse. In second unit, we have fundamentals of data mining, data mining functionalities, classification of data mining, data mining task primitives. Here, why we need the data mining? Because in order to provide the efficient and fast access of data, we need to mine the data. We are not mining the data. We are discovering the data from the large set of data. So in other words, we can say data mining as the knowledge discovery of data mining, that is KDD process. After that, the major issues and challenges in data mining data pre-processing, need of pre-processing. Here, why we need the pre-processing? Because before performing any operation on the data, we have to convert raw data into appropriate format. We have to normalize the data, sets the data, making the calculations with the data, followed by the data cleaning and integration, transformation, data reduction, discretization, and concept hierarchy generation data mining application areas. In unit three, we have classification introduction. So why we need the classification? For example, in a shopping mall, we have the different blocks for each and every product. For example, when we are going to the clothing, there are different sections of clothing like kids section, male section, female section. So that is the basic concept behind classification which satisfied the needs of the user according to their requirement. Next is decision tree. The decision tree help us to reduce the big data format into smallest hierarchical format so that the data can be normalized very efficiently. Next is building decision tree including algorithm, split algorithm based on information theory, the split algorithm based on Guinea index, decision tree rules, now-based method. In now-based method, we have to work with now-based formulas. Next topic is cluster. Cluster analysis, desired cluster, desired data in cluster analysis. So why we need the clustering? In clustering, we are grouping the similar data items in one block. We are grouping the data having same properties in one block, making the cluster for efficiently use of that cluster. Next topic is computing the distance. For computing distance, we have Euclidean distance formula. Next is categorization of major clusters with the help of partitioning methods. In partitioning methods, we have k-means method and em algorithm. In k-means method, we are focused on the centroid and mean of the element. In EM method, which is nothing but extensible measurement method. In hierarchical method, divided into 
two parts. First one is agglomerative method and second is diversity method. The agglomerative method works on bottom to top approach and diversity method works from top to bottom approach. Coming to unit four, mining frequent patterns and association rules. In unit four, we have frequent data patterns to mine. That is mining frequent patterns means we have to extract proper information from different patterns. As I told you, data warehouse stored information with homogeneous and heterogeneous format, structured and unstructured format. So with the help of mining techniques, we can calculate the appropriate patterns of the data for mining it. Association rules, market basket analysis, frequent item sets and association rules. In association rules, we have a priori algorithm and FB, FB growth algorithm. In a priori algorithm, which is commonly used for frequent pattern mining, it uses bottom up approach, identifying frequent item set to generate association rules for themselves. And FB growth algorithm is uses compression techniques for abstracting the data from the given set of data. Coming to unit five, in unit five, we have web data mining, which is nothing but the process of using data mining techniques and algorithms to extract information directly from the web pages by extracting it from the web documents and services. Next to that, we have graph properties for web, web content mining, which is nothing but mining the content of the web from the linked websites. Web structure mining, web uses mining. In web structure mining, we have a tool that can be used to recognize the relationship between the different types of data. In web content mining, the discovery of useful information we got from the large content. In text mining, it is the process of transforming unstructured data into structured data. With visual web data mining, temporal and spatial data mining. In special data mining, which refers to the process of extraction of knowledge from special relationships and etc. Coming towards unit 6, starts with big data analytics introduction. In big data analytics, we have include some challenges in order to satisfy the quality of the data and the lack of the data. Next to big data, um, big, uh, big data analysis, we have current challenges that we have faced in big data analysis. Next to that, we have trends and application of big data analysis, technologies for big data management. The technologies for big data management are operational big data technology and analytical big data technology. Coming towards the MapReduce paradigm, the MapReduce paradigm is created in 2003 to enable processing of large data sets in a massively parallel manner. Its goal is to simply simplify the approach to transformation and analyze the large amount of the data. Last but not the least with the Hadoop concept. The Hadoop concept is an open source framework that is used to efficiently store and process large data sets ranging in size from gigabytes to petabytes of Data. So, as per the syllabus, the outcomes of the course are from unit 1, the student should be able to explain the basic concept of data warehouse and to concept and contrast the OLAP operations. From unit 2, the student should identify the fundamentals of data mining and discuss various techniques for data processing. From unit 3, the student should be able to illustrate and apply different classification and data clustering techniques. From unit 4, the student should be able to apply different data mining techniques from frequent item set mining. From unit 5, the student should be able to describe and compare various techniques of web temporal and spatial data mining. And from unit 6, the student should be able to define the concept of big data and discuss it using map reduce function with Hadoop. So, so the books of the data mining and warehousing are first one is G.Y. Hen and Michael Camber with data mining concept and techniques, second edition, 
eligible reprinted in 2008. And second one is AK Pujari Data Mining Techniques, second in its edition, University Press 2030s. Third one is Jason Bale, Machine Learning for the Big Data, Hands on for Developers and Technical Professionals, Wiley India Publication. So I hope it is clear to all of you about the subject. Thank you. Thank you.